is this? We're not supposed to be having snow. Right when I thought maybe spring had sprung, this happens. It's supposed to get one or two inches, I think, and it's not gonna stay around very long. It's gonna warm up, it's all gonna be gone, and hopefully that will be it. First thing I have to do this morning is I have got to get these floor mats set off to Michael Petty, who won the floor mat giveaway here almost a week ago. And Michael, I, I don't have these like spick and span cleaned off. I hope that's not a problem. I just need to get down to my P.O. box and get them sent off to you. I apologize, I've, I've put it off a couple of times. I've forgotten about it a couple of times. This morning, I'm gonna get it done. So it won't take much to clean these off once you get them. They've just got a little bit of, not a whole lot of anything on them really. So I'm gonna take these up. We're gonna be taking the Tahoe. I'm gonna run down to the P.O. box. I got an alert that something is waiting for me down there anyway. So I'm gonna go pick that up, get these sent off, and then I'm coming back and we're gonna get busy on the Bronco again. So we're gonna motor down to the P.O. box, pick something up, drop something off. We'll be back at the shop shortly. Man, this weather just sucks. I hate this. So ready for 70 and 80 degree weather. Not this upper 20s, snow, wet, sloppy mess. Okay, just got back from shipping those floor mats off finally and had one thing down there in my uh, P.O. box. So we're going to start off with a little mail time. This comes from, I don't know, it comes from San Antonio, Texas. That's all it says. So we'll see what's inside here. Make sure there's nothing else in there. Nope. And he said right on here, please don't use my name on the show. Thank you. So I won't do that. It looks like we have a we have a Texas exempt plate, which I don't even think I have. Yeah, I do. I have two Texas plates up there, but they aren't like this. They're little look like they're a little newer, but we have a Texas exempt plate. And he also sent a great big sticker. City of San Antonio. This, I'm not sure where I'm going to put. Well, I think I'll stick it right over there on the fridge. So that'll look good there. He didn't want me to use his name, so I won't. But thank you very much. This will be going up on the wall. This will be going up on the fridge. Well, unfortunately, that big sticker, that San Antonio sticker, I went to put it on the fridge. I don't know if maybe it was an old sticker or what. It stuck okay, but when I went to pull that protective covering off the front, it was not coming off and it would just, it would pull, it, it ruined it. It pulled the actual sticker, it would tear it. Whether I started on the edge, the middle, wherever I started it at, it was stuck pretty good and it would just tear it. It acted kind of like it was an old sticker to me. But I did get the Texas exempt plate up here on the wall. Not too many more to go, and this will all be filled up. And I think I said in my last video, if you saw that, I'm gonna get to taking these inner fender liners out, these plastic, plastic inside the fenders, and come up in here. Don't really need to take them out, need to, just need to take the screws out of them. And I think I said in my last video, you have to undo all this stuff. Well, you don't have to undo all this stuff from the, this fender liner. You just have to undo it from the fender itself. I may have misspoke on that. So that makes things a little easier if, uh, if that's what you were thinking. There is a lot attached to the fender, but yet it's not all that much. And it's just nuts, bolts, screws, that kind of thing. And generally these screws under here that attach the fender to this plastic fender liner are nearly impossible to get out. Looks like a few are already missing off of this side. These actually don't, these might come out. We'll see here in a moment. 
So I'm not actually going to show that. I mean, it's just taking out five, six, eight, twelve, however many screws there are in there, just unscrewing screws. Okay, so I have the inner fender liner or whatever you want to call it in there. That's all disconnected out here, and some of those screws just would not come loose. And I took care of that with the ear chisel. It uh, it knocked them out pretty easily. There's also another. There's a bolt up under here. It's up um, right up in there that it is loose but uh, for whatever reason it's not popping out of there so not real concerned with that at the moment I think I may just go ahead and get the hood off of this take this fender off for you and then off camera I'll go over here and do the same thing to the other side and to get the hood off it really is pretty darn easy just need to loosen or take these bolts out on each side over here and over there take these off and that hood will come right off of there once you get the hood off probably want to take these off of the fenders you're going to want to be reusing these if they're in good shape other than that that's really about all there is to it so i'm going to go ahead and take the bolts off and hold the hood on pull the hood off of there get those uh get the hinges off and then we'll take the fender off and the nice thing about when you're taking all this stuff apart you really just don't have to give a darn because you're getting rid of all of it anyway socket it was down in here put it over here Now that we have the hood off, hinges off, I'm going to remove anything that's attached to the fenders, which there isn't a whole lot. I've got this here. Take this off. I think there's two, maybe there's three bolts that hold that on. I don't remember. Um, the bracket down here for the jack, I'm leaving on this fender and probably not putting back in. And this harness has some of those like Christmas tree things I believe that just stab into the fender pry those off and that's about it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll pull that fender off so I've been working on getting everything taken off over here and of course these little plastic things broke that hold this harness up not a real big deal we'll fasten that back up somehow and we put it back together and then pretty much got everything else taken off you need to take that bolt, that bolt out, and also there's one there and there's one back in there that you need to remove. And then once you have those two bolts out, this piece will come on out of there, just like that. Of course, if you're just taking the fender off and not the radiator support, these four bolts will still be in, so this, this wouldn't come off. And I also want to say right now, I'm not a professional. I don't do this every day. So if there's other ways to do any of this, then there's other ways. More than one way to skin a cat, I guess. Now when you're taking these fenders off, 
And I went ahead and I removed these top two bolts back here. All this up here is apart. And I had already taken these out, which if you're just taking the fender off, you have to get to these up inside the wheel well. You have to just get back behind that inner liner a little bit with a long extension and you can get on those. And no, I don't recall the exact size of those off the top of my head. They can be a little tricky to get to, but if you know where they are, you, you can get them off. There is this bolt down here, the ones that I kind of showed you up in the front there. And there's also one in here. Let me get a light. There is another bolt. And where is it? Well, it's, there it is right there. If you can see that in there. And sometimes this light is actually too bright, but it's right below, right below this bottom hinge. And you gotta take that bolt out. When you go to take the fender off, you're gonna have to move it forward. And that's why you have to take all this stuff off the front to get the fender off. Because right here, it fits over these two, two posts or pegs or whatever you wanna call them. And you have to move it forward to get it off of those. Okay, now I think, I think I have everything off of here. And it should, I believe, Come off. It's off the front. I'm gonna put some gloves on. This thing's so rusty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the heck out of my hand. And I should just lift off of here. I don't think there's anything else holding it on. There we go. Here. So I'm just going to take a quick look at these and uh, see how damaged they are, if any. Hopefully not. in good shape. Don't see any damage on it at all. Good to go. Now I'll break into these fenders. Hopefully there's no damage on them. I know sometimes car parts get delivered and they've got damage. They're certainly not packs the best, but uh, we'll see. When I got fenders for the flare side, they had the same problem up here in the front. This one is really rather bent over. I can probably fix it. Other than that, I think it looks like it's okay. 
That, uh, I'm not real happy about that, but if it bent one way, it'll probably bend back. And I can, I can make it look all right if it, if it uh, needs to be. Actually, bends pretty easy up there. But that's the radiator support. Looks like it's in good shape. And this fender over here looks like it's pretty decent. I don't think it has any damage on it at all. So not too bad, just one little thing to fix. I, I've heard of people getting fenders and panels and that kind of thing that, you know, they have big dents in them and they have to do body work on them before they can even put them on the vehicle. So as much as I'd like to just take all the rest of this apart, well, I'm gonna take all the rest of this apart. I'm gonna get to work here on this fender here shortly and slap on new metal. I'm not gonna do it quite that quick and the reason for that is I want to paint the radiator support. I want to paint the inside of these fenders with the color of blue that we're going to be painting the Bronco. And I believe here in not too many days, it's supposed to warm up. It's going to warm up enough to where I can paint the inside of the fenders and the radiator support. Even if something happens or it doesn't turn out quite perfect, probably nobody but me and my wife are ever going to see it. But I do want to get those painted. And then as far as painting the firewall on this blue, um, it's either just not going to happen or I may have a like a spray can of the same color blue that I'm going to paint the rest of the Bronco with and then just go in here and tape and paper everything off the best I can and just paint that with a spray can. Won't be the greatest, but might be better than having it white, or maybe it just doesn't really matter. I mean, this is not a total frame off restoration every nut and bolt. It's not gonna be a show quality truck when, uh, when it's all done that you're putting mirrors under and hauling it around on a truck from show to show. It's gonna be a driver. What I'm doing, taking this Bronco that seems to run just fine, but, uh, but had some issues cosmetically and so forth, fixing those. And for a 93 Bronco driving down the road, it's gonna look pretty darn good. But like I said, it's not a total restoration, never meant to be, never went into it planning that. I don't know what you really call it, a daily driver restoration, something like that. But I am gonna be going and getting some paint to paint this stuff with the inside of it, and that will be coming up real soon. But here in just a few minutes, I'm gonna get busy and start taking this other fender off, although I may hold off on that because there's really nothing holding the radiator support in right now. So kinda need to get everything disconnected from that. I'll figure all that out. Just like if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to figure some of it out. Like I said, this isn't something I do every day, but really it comes down to it's just all nuts and bolts things bolted up to other things. Just have to look and take it all apart, put it back together. So I'm not exactly sure where I left off there. I ran up to the house real quick, grabbed something to eat. But I do want to mention Central Oregon Shenanigans. Hop over to their channel. I'll link it down below in the description. Check their channel out. I know they haven't been posting a lot of videos. They haven't been posting any videos here recently. Heater's turning on. I gotta shut that off. Like I said, I know they haven't been posting any videos here recently and the reason for that is they've been having, uh, been having some computer issues. James did go out and he got himself a hot rod computer. So they, I don't know if they're ready to start uploading again or not. I know there were some things they wanted to do to it. I'm not going to say too much because I don't know all the details. But I do know they have some good stuff in the works some good videos coming so hop over to their channel check them out if you like what you see hit that subscribe button also you might want to check out johnson's garage i'll link it down below as well last i saw he was poking his head up through the floorboard where the where the gear shift is uh, supposed to go in his explorer not sure what was up with all the vegetables being thrown at him but go over and check his channel out again if you like what you see subscribe also, real quick, want to mention the license plate wall. And if you have a license plate, just like this Texas one I hung up, if you have a license plate or anything else that you would like to send to the Fox Shop, the address, that's down below as well. 
And yes, I'm going to throw in, if you would like to pick yourself up, a channel sticker or a Fox Shop hoodie, t-shirt, zipper hoodie. The link for all that, that's down below also. So we are going to be getting this all torn apart. Won't take too much longer. Gonna get these painted up, fenders on the inside. Gonna get the radiator support painted, which it'll probably get scratched up putting it back in. That's another reason I'd like to get a can of this blue mixed up, spray can, so I can touch that up. So that's gonna do it for this video. Give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.